Have you ever wondered why your bread is so dense? Or why it didn't rise evenly? Then this video is perfect for you. I also had these issues when I started baking and I'll explain to you why this is happening and how to get great results each time you bake. Hi guys, my name is Susie and I recently started learning how to make my own bread. I ran into a few challenges recently and I almost gave up baking. But then I started reading more about the science of bread making and I decided to share what I've learned so far in a series called Knowledge Sharing. This video will have timestamps so you can skip to a section you're interested in. As a disclaimer, this is what I found from research and experimenting. If there's anything I see that you disagree with, leave a comment below and let's have a discussion. I'm hoping to learn from you guys as well. I'll have all of my references in the description box below. The final density of your bread and how well your bread rises in the oven depends on how long the final proofing of your bread dough was. The word proofing in bread making is used to describe the process of the dough increasing in size. Most bread recipes call for yeast and when we proof dough, we are giving the yeast time to go to work. During proofing, the flavor of the bread develops thanks to the yeast we added. The bread also rises because of the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast. I have a video in this series about how yeast works, which is linked up here. If your recipe calls for a sponge or a starter, this is called the pre-fermentation stage. A sponge or pre-ferment is made using a small amount of flour, liquid, and yeast and letting it sit for a few hours or overnight. The sponge helps enhance the flavor of the bread and also extends its shelf life. Proofing done after kneading the dough is called the initial rise, first rise, first proofing, or bulk fermentation. The last proofing done after the dough is shaped is called the final rise or final proofing. You can also proof the bread dough between the first and the last rise. The two major factors that affect how well our bread proofs are temperature and time. A lot of people think you need to proof your dough in a warm environment, but this isn't always true. Proofing your dough at room temperature or at a lower temperature allows the yeast to slowly break down the sugar, which gives the bread really great flavor, but also takes longer for the bread to finish proofing. Proofing the dough at a higher temperature, on the other hand, speeds up the proofing process and could actually make the flavor of the bread to not be as pleasant. The next factor is time. You want to make sure you give your bread dough adequate time to finish proofing. If you underproof your bread dough, the bread won't have as much flavor and will be very dense. If you overproof your dough, the bread won't rise evenly. Proofing is more crucial during the final rise since this will determine how well your bread rises in the oven. Bread dough also rises quicker after each rise. After kneading your dough, place it in a grease bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Bread dough can be proofed on the countertop at room temperature. You can also stick the dough in the fridge if the recipe calls for it or if you want to slow down the proofing process. If you need to proof the dough in a warm place, you can put it in the microwave or in the oven without turning them on. If you're in a rush or if you need to proof your dough in a warmer environment, you can use an instant pot using a yogurt function or you can place boiled water in the pot or dish underneath your dough in the oven. During all the proofing stages except the final rise, it's usually okay to wait until the dough has doubled in size. During the final rise, if you gently press your knuckle into the dough and it springs back right away, then your dough is underproofed. And if you bake it like this, it will result in a very dense loaf. So just give the dough more time to proof. If you gently press your knuckle into the dough and it springs back minimally, then your dough is done proofing. If your dough has holes in it and it doesn't spring back at all, then your dough is overproofed and if you bake it like this, it won't rise evenly. But don't give up because you can actually save dough that is overproofed. All you have to do is deflate the dough, shape it, and proof it again, but I'll only do this once. And this also works for all bread dough 
except sour bread dough. While I was editing this video, I thought of another factor that affects how well your bread rises. This is how well you shape your bread dough before proofing. When shaping dough for the first rise or for shaping your final dough into a ball or balls, make sure the top of your dough is smooth and the dough feels taut. This can be achieved by dragging the dough in circles on the countertop. Place the dough in the proofing dish seam side down. When shaping your dough into a log, the seam applies. Tightly roll your dough into a cylinder and pinch the seams together to create a complete seal. Place the dough seam side down before proofing. This ensures that you don't have any openings in the dough to allow carbon dioxide to escape through. All right, I think this is a good place to stop. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I can't wait for you guys to try out what you learned. If you did find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more baking videos from me. If you still have questions, please leave it in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.